In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know in order to properly set up and multi-track record your Rodecaster Pro 2 audio mixer all the way through to your computer. Now, in this video, I'm using a Mac laptop running GarageBand as my audio recording software, but the tips and tricks and setup procedure that we show you in this video will work for any major DAW or recording software that you're using. If you're using Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, GarageBand, Audacity, Adobe, anything like that, the tips and tricks that we show you in this video will work for you. Now, first of all, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, the mics, the stands, the cables, the mixer, any of the equipment that we have here, we have links down in the description below where you can find current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Next, what is multi-track recording? On the Rodecaster Pro 2, if you're multi-track recording, it'll send a copy of the main stereo mix and it'll send a copy of each individual channel that you have on your Rodecaster Pro 2 all the way through to your computer. This can be many, many channels. In this video, we're gonna show you how to set up the first eight. After that, you can carry on and set up the rest of them if you want individual control over the sound pads and that type of thing after the fact as well. Next, before we set everything up here, we need to quickly talk about the difference between post-fade recording and pre-fade recording. Post-fade recording, is saving a copy of each individual channel after you've mixed it with faders. So right now, if you're looking at this, you would see the unity volume coming through from channel one, and you would not see level coming through from all the rest. If you mixed in some other microphones, the level that you set your fader would dictate the output of those channels in the multi-track recording all the way through to your computer. Next, we have pre-fade. Pre-fade will ignore all the faders and mix that you have set up on your Rodecaster Pro 2, and it'll send the raw data from each channel unmixed all the way through to your recording. There are pros and cons of each. My theory and the way that things are kind of pre-set up in the Rodecaster Pro 2 is that pre-fade multi-track recording is the way to go. You already get a copy of your stereo mix, so... If you're taking backup channels, you should probably have them unaffected by faders just to get the raw data, just in case you do need to mix or change something in the future. If you want it post-fade, I'll show you how to do that. Next, we need to go into the audio mixer settings here on the Rodecaster Pro 2 and set it up on this end before we go to the computer. Let's go to settings, outputs, and multi-track. Sometimes you might be on recording, which is for the SD card and external hard drive. Make sure you're on the USB window here. This is where you can change the setting between pre-fade and post-fade. For the purposes of this video, we're going to stay on pre-fader and just capture the raw data from every channel over on the computer. I'm going to close this now. Let's go over to the computer and set up our project file to capture all of these channels from the Rodecaster Pro 2. First of all, I have GarageBand open here. We're going to start a new empty project. Hit choose. It's going to ask you what you're trying to record right off the bat. This is a very standard screen among all recording software, and let's select microphone. It doesn't really matter at this phase. Next, we want to go over to our preferences. Every piece of software will be a little bit different, but what we're trying to do here is we want to make sure that the audio software that you're using is selecting the Rodecaster Pro 2 main multi-track. You do not want to be selected on system setting, headphones, built-in output, or Rodecaster Pro 2 chat. You want the main multi-track, and you want to set that for your output and the input on your computer. Now we can close that window. Next, for the purposes of this video, we're going to make seven or eight tracks here, so we're just going to keep making new tracks. This is going to capture all the tracks that we're bringing over from the Rodecaster Pro 2, so as many as you want to capture, that's as many as you should create. So next, now that we have tracks one through eight, I'm just going to assign them to the inputs coming from the Rodecaster. So if I select audio one here, I'm going to go down to the input, and I want to make sure that it's Rodecaster Pro 2, main multi-track, number one. Next for number two, obviously we want to change that to number two, Rodecaster Pro, main multi-track. I'm going to go through and uh, update this for the rest of them as well, for three through eight for you. 
Okay, so I signed number one through eight to outputs one through eight from the Rodecaster Pro 2. That should make sense. Next, let's quickly label these just so we can see exactly what we're doing. Okay, so I've labeled all these. Now you can see left and right stereo outputs are the first two channels that come from your audio mixer. Next, it's microphones one, two, three, and four through channels three to six, respectively. Then we have the Bluetooth and the USB channel, and the rest just keep coming out of the audio mixer. So if you want the level for your sound pads, then you just keep going all the way down. But for this video, we're going to keep it to the first eight channels here. Next, what we need to do is we need to arm these tracks. We need to tell GarageBand, the software that we're using, that we want to record all these tracks at the same time. In GarageBand, you hit Option P. In order to do that, you select Record Enable there. And then this record button appears, and you can select that for every channel. You can see as I'm speaking into the Shure SM7B microphone right now that it's moving with the stereo output because that's where the fader is. So the stereo output is getting that mic and that mic only. You can see here microphone 4 is moving, and that's the Rode NT1 that we have over here. That's obviously coming in at a different level because it's about a foot and a half away from my face, but I did put it in here just so you can see that we are, in fact, recording multiple tracks at once. In fact, I'm going to fire up a, a Bluetooth signal here from my phone so we can see that the audio is moving from that as well. Okay, so there, now I have some Bluetooth music coming as well. So you can see we're getting signal from mic 1, mic 4, the Bluetooth channel, and we're getting the main stereo mix, which basically just has the Shure SM7B again from our Rodecaster Pro 2. So this is what multi-track recording looks like. I'm going to turn off the metronome since we're not recording anything musical, and then I'm going to turn on the record button here. Now you can see here the channels light up, and that red bar indicates that we are multi-track recording on everything. I'm just going to pull the Rode NT1 close so you can see the level and the meter working on that as well. This is the Rode NT1. You can see now that that bit is coming alive on our screen as we're recording. And now we're back to the Shure SM7B, and you can see the meter up by the Shure SM7B is moving again, as well as the stereo levels, because that's all I have coming from the Rodecaster Pro 2. At the end of your recording, at the end of your podcast, you can hit stop, and then you can select whatever channels you want for export. If it was me and you had a clean recording, I would probably just turn all these channels down or mute them all, and then export the main stereo mix. If you want to edit it, we have tons of videos on how to do that as well. And you can check out other videos from other people on uh, YouTube on how to mix and master audio in post-editing in GarageBand or in whatever software you're using. But as you can see here, it is really straightforward. You can easily capture all the tracks coming from your Rodecaster Pro 2. As I mentioned before, if you do have any questions or if there's something I missed and this video is not helpful for you, please leave a comment down in the comment section below with the question that you have or if you have any other questions about the Rodecaster Pro 2. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, again, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.